This all used to belong to the McKinney family. We bought the whole kit and caboodle from the old man just before he died. Except for a few acres his daughter still lives on. Old Iva Ruth McKinney must be a hundred years old by now. This here's section 12. There's just a few lots left. Two across the road and this one at the end here. Now you saw what this street's gonna look like in a few months. The model you all like best could be sitting right there on that lot come springtime. Look at all that open space, Shag. And that old pepper tree. If we take this lot, that tree will have to go. You can't cut that down. Beautiful. Oh, it's smack in the middle of the lot. Where are we going to build the house? Lot's big enough. You can build in front of the tree. Wouldn't that be perfect? We could have it right out our back with <laughs> We've been saving 20 years to build this house. We take this lot and you want that tree, we're going to keep that tree. Doing. Nice cold beer uh -huh. still good, huh? Oh, yeah. Getting your exercise anyway. Right around here. I'll get this door here. Yep. Back in uh. there against that wall. Easy go. <laughs> all right, Daryl. You take the books in and I'll start that monkey stuff from the roof rack. What's this house going to be? You give all the orders. Uh-huh. Tina. Huh? Don't you go lifting those heavy boxes down by yourself. Oh, Mama, don't worry about me. I'm stronger than I look. Hey, Tiger. I don't know what we'd do without her. Uh, yeah, I just wish her sister would show up. Not to help, of course, but at least she could have come and see the new house. Well, she's off in her own world someplace. Same as always. Actually, I was hoping we'd get to see our little granddaughter. Mm. I worry about that kid. Maybe they'll come to the house for the party. I hate to say it, but the only time Gayla shows up is when she needs money. Well, maybe this time she'll... Wonder who that is. I don't know. It looks like he's praying. Okay? Yeah, I don't know how it got away like that. As long as you boys are all right. Give me a hand there. Hello. Hello. You must be Mr. Williams. That's me. Folks call me Shag. Sam Haney. Sam? My wife, Judith. Hello. Hello. We, uh, we just moved in here. Happy to meet you. Hey, kid. Come here. I want you to meet the neighbors. This is my daughter, Tina. Hi, hi. And uh, this is her fiancé, Daryl. Sam, how you doing? Where's your mother? Gene, come on out and meet the neighbors. I think we got lucky. They seem like awfully nice people. You didn't turn on the air conditioner, did you? Nope. Look behind you. What if they say no? They won't. Where do we turn? We'll talk to her. But what if they do? Carly, would you stop asking me that? Hey, have I ever let you down? <laughs> so I think it turned out really great. I do. We built this house for our retirement. Of course, it'll be years before that happens. <laughs> 
Well, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm in charge of operations down at the patrol plant in Delmont. Oh, that's not a bad commute. Oh, how about you? Oh, I sell telephone systems to corporations, insurance companies. Somebody banks. said you work for the airlines. Yeah, Pan Global. I'm a dispatcher out at the airport. We also have a stained glass shop over near Delmont. Oh, stained glass. I love stained glass. <laughs> you know, they're <laughs> Oh, oh, what a surprise. Gene, guess who's here? Carly, oh, I'm so glad to see you. I'm afraid you wouldn't make it. We missed you, sweetheart. What a weird storm. A block away, the sun's out, and here it's like we're under a faucet. I want all of you fine people to meet my mystery daughter here, the lovely and talented Gayla. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look, oh, how good you're getting. Girls, this is Leo and Madeline Garrick. They live next door. Lovely D and Doris Marshall. They live across the street. This is Dayla. Nice to meet you. Carly. Gene and Beryl gave us food for a house for them present. Are they cute? I think they're afraid of the storm. I'm going to put them up in the guest room. Um, here's something we uh, brought you. Hope it didn't get too wet. What happened is this. I met this guy. He's a musician, but he's incredibly talented, very bright, and he works very hard. Well, he's got no money. Haven't we been through this before? He wants me to go to Europe with him. He thinks he can make a go of it in Germany. Now, wait a minute, young lady. I am not paying a dime for you to go traipsing off to Europe or something. I never asked you to. Just let her finish what she's saying. I know what's coming. You don't either. We go through this every time we see her. I have never asked you to watch Carly for me. You want Carly to stay with us? I can't take her with me. Oh, wait a minute here. I, I thought you wanted to ask us for something. I'm asking you to take Carly for me. Honey, that's not asking us for anything. I mean, that's giving us a gift. You know how we feel about Carly. Yeah, well, I'm talking about a fairly permanent thing here. At least a year. You could be talking about forever wouldn't make a difference. <laughs> We've got plenty of room. There's tons of kids in the neighborhood. Yeah. The only question I have is how does Carly feel about it? What's Carly's idea? You know, the roots are very fragile. You have to press the dirt down in. Almost like you're pushing on a balloon. That's it. It's going to be magnificent when we're finished. Too bad the landscapers didn't do a better job of filling in these dips in the soil. At least this one's the right size for a garden. Perfect. 
Of course, we'll have the other one filled in. Otherwise, how are we going to play croquet? my life, and that's going to be a very long time. Now, we better get in and get changed. Got to register you for school and go shopping for some clothes. You shouldn't have to go to school. I don't know anybody. When you get this one ready for outbound, go on over to number eight and prep it for eight ball ten. Check. Hank just called from the hospital. His wife went into labor. I can use the overtime. You sure? You're going on the graveyard shift as it is next week. I got a new house to pay for and a granddaughter to feed. I can use all the help I can get. Now we lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. God bless mommy and me, mom, and people. And please tell my mom to send me a letter. Amen. Amen. You think she's in Germany yet? I think so. She's probably just getting up. No, I'm not supposed to say this. Say what, sweetheart? Well, I love my mommy, but I'm glad I'm living with you now. So am I. Your mommy loves her very much. And so do we. To him, I'm a bear. And the kitty cat. And the elephant. Would you like to sleep with all your animals? Until I fall asleep. There's no room. Please. There's nothing to be afraid of, Carly. Not all your friends here. I'll leave the door open. No. Close the door. You want the door closed? That way the shadows can't come in. What shadows? The ones in the hallway. There's nothing in the hallway, Carly. I'll close the door if that's what you want. Call the contractor. I have to call him anyway about the plumbing. What's wrong with the plumbing? The toilet's acting up. Probably just a stuck valve. How come it's so hot in here? It's not. I've been cold all day. You hungry? Mm, yes. 
sure am. It's 80 degrees in here, honey. It feels like 50. Maybe you're coming down with something. Maybe the same thing Tina had. Tina still got it. She's still sick? Ever since the housewarming party, I told her to go to the doctor. Well, maybe you should go, too. I'm not sick. I'm just cold. So how did things go with Carly today? Oh, it's wonderful having her here. But I think it's a bigger adjustment for her than we realize. How's that? She kept asking me how long we planned to live here. Mm -hmm. I finally figured out what was going on. What? This is the first stable home she's ever known. That's a big change for a kid who's moved around as much as she has. There are other things. Like wanting to sleep with the door closed. What's wrong with that? Most children like to sleep with the door open. I don't think anything terrible has ever happened to her. But I do think she's a break. I don't change. Give her a little time with us. She'll be all right. I can't find anything wrong. The mechanism's fine. The wiring's fine. Then why did it go crazy? My husband said it nearly came down on his car. Could be someone in the neighborhood's on the same frequency. Or sometimes an airplane will make them go up. Oh, it didn't just go up. Excuse me. Hello. Hi, honey. How you doing? Tina, calm down. Stop crying. Tell me what's the matter. You have what? Removing the spleen didn't do it. It spread way beyond that. Where did this come from? She was perfectly healthy. I can't say. All I can tell you is it's the most aggressive case I've ever seen. We're going to have to be equally aggressive in the treatment. What are her chances? If I could categorize it, I could tell you. But I've never seen a cancer behave like this. Honey, these chemo treatments are not going to be easy. You're going to need lots of help. Daryl will do what he can, but he can't be with you 24 hours a day. That's why we want you to come home and live with us until this is all over. We'll turn the sewing room into a bedroom. I can take you to the hospital, take care of your medications, do whatever you need done. You're going to be just fine. There's nothing in the world as strong as this family when we stick together. You have to eat. Please. Oof. Try to eat something. I'm sorry, Mama. I'm too sick. You go. No. I'm warm. I'm warm. You're gonna make it, Tina. Mima? I made another one for her. Oh, it's beautiful. You can hang it up like the others. She'll see it when she wakes up. <laughs> Don't worry, Auntie. No, you won't let him in.
right there. What are you doing? Talking to the streetlight. We're asking the questions. If it blinks once, it means yes. If it blinks twice, it means no. When it stays on like that, it means it's time to come in. Do I have to go in now? She's getting worse. It's been three months and she's getting worse every day. I don't know what to do. I don't want her to go back in the hospital. Jean, she may have to. I don't think she'd survive it. But the treatment she's getting now are practically killing her. What she gets in a hospital may be more intense, but it also may be her only chance of pulling through. Damn airplanes. Must be having a dog fight up there. Damn it, Jean. You're gonna cost us a fortune if you keep turning that thing up. It's hotter than a Georgia biscuit in this house now. My God, you're wearing two sweaters. It's cold. It's not cold. You're cold. You're always cold. This house is like an oven. Carly, uh, honey, why don't you run upstairs and get ready for bed? We have to stick together, Jean. We can't let this thing tear us apart. Nothing's ever going to tear us apart. I need you. I need you, too. And Tina needs us both. Leave a window open. I hope so. I heard something.
Something happened to the birds. Was it the shadows? No, no, no. It was, it was bugs. Some bugs got in. What shadows? The ones to talk to. The ones up in the hallway. Now they're talking to you. Not exactly talking. I can't really understand them. Carla, you have a wonderful imagination. That's why you're a good artist. But there's a big difference between what's in your mind and what's... Tina's sick. Well, maybe you go up to bed. I'll be there in a minute. Pull the car into the ground. Carry her out. Come on, baby. Come on. So you're optimistic, Doc. Amazed is more like it. In only three weeks, the recovery's like a miracle. I didn't change the formula much, but that little difference did the trick. Medically, it doesn't make any sense. That's what makes life interesting, isn't it? The things we can't explain. Doctor says you'll be getting out of here soon. Yeah. I'll be out of here so fast if you blink, you'll miss it. We're going straight down to the courthouse. We're getting married. <gasps> At the courthouse? A witness in a ring, that's all we need. After all I've been through, Daddy, the frills just don't matter. All that matters is right here in this room. Cheaper, anyway. <laughs> I think Santa Claus went a little overboard this year. Why, here is another one for Carl. Another one? Now that is to replace those imaginary friends you've been talking to. You want me to talk to a mouse? Oh, I almost forgot. Mouse needs a friend, too. Daryl, would you hand me that? There you go, man. toilet flushed again. Uh, did you see it this time? I heard it. Unless you actually see it, Jean, please don't say it flushed. How come you're so snappy about it? 
I just like to deal in facts. That's all. And the fact is, you didn't see it. I know what a flushing toilet sounds like. Well, when you call the plumber, just tell him it's making a noise, but don't tell him it flushed because he's going to tell you that's impossible. Now, see this arm? Feel how much pressure it takes to lift it. See what I mean? Uh, there's no way this thing can do that by itself. Well, it's been happening ever since we moved in. First, uh, kind of gurgle, and then air bubbles. Well, you might have had a stuck valve, but uh, there's no way this flushed by itself. I uh, appreciate you coming out to check on it. If you got any problems, give a whistle. I can see myself out. Okay. First, I thought there was something wrong with my eyes, but I heard them chirping. I heard the cage rattle. I read somewhere that if you don't get enough sleep, you start to hallucinate. I haven't had a decent night's sleep since I bought that house. Ah, uh, it's stress. I mean, look at the pressure you've been under. You move into a new house, your daughter gets cancer, and you take on the responsibility for your granddaughter. Now, I took a management course one time, and they told us that on a stress scale, that moving into a new house is second only to the death of a loved one. Stress, huh? I haven't seen anything as clearly as you have. But I've seen things. Carly has too. And I've heard things. 
sure wish we'd have talked about this sooner. I thought I was going crazy. Well, the same thing about me. It's one thing to talk about garage door opening and closing, but this is more like a present sort of ghost. Al, let's keep our feet on the ground here. There hasn't been a day go by that I felt alone in this house. Even now, I feel as if something is watching us. Well, I don't feel that way, and I sure don't think we ought to talk that way around Carly. It's her imagination she will be talking to ghosts at the <laughs> dinner table. I wouldn't say anything to the neighbors, either. Don't worry. If anybody said this kind of thing to me, I think they would have loved the soft side. I almost wish it was a ghost, though. You go a long way to explain it. Now, trust me on this, there is a rational explanation for all of it. Even if there was such a thing as ghosts, which there isn't, there wouldn't be any in this house. Why not? Because we're the first ones living here. Who's going to haunt it? start keeping a journal, writing down everything that happens that we can't explain. You mean that we haven't been able to explain? Such as the street light that keeps winking at us. Carly was outside again last night, talking to it. Call the utility company, Jane. It isn't any one thing, Shag. It's the accumulation of it all. It started back... My God. Tina got sick right after we moved into this house. Oh, for Pete's sake. Come on now. And she didn't get better until we took her out of this house. You think that was just a coincidence? No, I don't think it was a coincidence. Then what was it? They changed her medication. The doctor said that couldn't do it. Do you really think that this house had anything to do with Tina getting sick? I don't know. I'm wondering if... I mean, if that's the case, why don't we all have cancer? Why do we all feel cold? I don't know. We're all different, that's why. It didn't make any sense for her to get cancer. There isn't any history of it on either side of our family. She comes from good, strong stock. My grandparents were the oldest living couple in the state for years. Which is why she got better. Which is why she's married now and expecting a child. And which is why she's going to live to be 110, just like us. I've checked out everything short of ripping up the underground cable. Everything tests out fine. Well, maybe we should rip up the cable. There's nothing wrong with the cable. They make those things to last a hundred years. Well, maybe this one's faulty. I doubt it. Anyway, I can't authorize digging up a cable. Who can? Well, you'd have to ask a district supervisor. At this point, I'm so frustrated. I'm not going to ask for anything. I'm going to insist. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. How you feeling? Hi. Feeling wonderful. How about you? Hmm. Me? Yeah. I feel like I'm living in the center of the Bermuda Triangle. The only time anything works around here is when someone goes out to fix it. My dryer is on the blink constantly. I have to hang my laundry in the backyard. The garage door goes up and down. The toilet still flushes by itself. And last night, the TV went on in the middle of the night. Now, how many things can you blame on an airplane? Well, if it's really that bad, why don't you just sell it and get out? And maybe the house is just a lemon. We thought about it. But the market is so far down, we'd lose a fortune if we try to get out now. Yeah, we always have the cabin in Montana. Have you ever tried to spend a winter in Montana? So what are you going to do? Keep trying to figure out what's going on. Do you remember anything about when you were sick? I don't want to remember. You kept saying something. You kept saying... Something was after you. Something was coming to get you. Mama, I was delirious. I didn't know what I was saying. Heavens, why do you even bring that up? Oh, look at that. Now the toaster doesn't work. It's not plugged in. What? Oh. <laughs>
doing, Jean? Hi, Sam. How are you? What cable? The electric cable. I called the utility company. The district supervisor said he'd send a crew I'm out. I'm not here to dig up any cable. He's here to dig our swimming pool. Oh, <laughs> Carly told me you were digging a pool. Every kid in the neighborhood knows about this pool. <laughs> Bring it on back. Excuse me. Can I help you? You can't dig here. I beg your pardon? This here is sacred ground. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's my backyard. There's two bodies buried where you fixing to dig. Two bodies, huh? That's right. Betty and Charlie Thomas. Betty and Charlie Thomas. Oh, what are you... Hey! Hold it! Wait a minute! Man over there said there are two bodies buried back here. What man? Uh, where'd he go? I have no idea. I don't even know where he came from. What did he look like? An old black man. Must have been in his 70s. In overalls and a big hat. Oh, he probably just come out of Baird Station. Where? The shanty town. It's just over the hill, a bunch of old black folks. Well, what if he was right? We'll find out soon enough. You really think they were murdered? You know, you read about this kind of stuff in the paper. You live next door to guys are quiet. Oh, I want to hear the Uh, Gene. Okay. Detective wants us to give him a complete description of the man who told us about the body. What man? Old black man. Is he a suspect? They're not looking for suspects, WD. They don't think a murder was committed. No, wait a minute. There's two bodies. They're both dead. And they were they? buried in Pine Box Coffin six feet under. The coroner says they may have been there for a hundred years. Taking samples down to the lab and see if he can't date them more accurately. In the meantime, he says they can't move the bodies until they locate the next of kin. Which is why they need to find the old man. Excuse us. I just wish they'd dig up the bodies and bury them someplace else. Do you remember when we were first moving in here? We saw that old guy up at the end of the street. You think it's the same man? I think so. I remember, he looked like he was praying. Maybe that's his relatives buried over there. Well, he wasn't looking over there. He was looking at our backyard. Maybe he came by to bless our new house. This is Jane Williams. I'm fine, thank you. Do you remember the old woman you told us about? I can't remember her name. Uh, the one whose family owned all this land, but back... 
Iva Ruth McKinney. That's her. Are you Mrs. McKinney? Not if you're from the development company. No. I'm Jean Williams. I live on Hilltop Drive. Section 12. Oh. You mean Black Hope. I beg my daddy not to sell that piece of land. It's the only serious falling out we ever had. I knew there'd be trouble. Bye. What was special about it? For one thing, it wasn't his to sell. Whose was it? That goes back to the Civil War. My grandfather gave that piece of land to the slaves when they were set free. They called it the Black Hope Edition. They were proud of it. They built a church and a schoolhouse. Those are all gone now. But right there, on that piece of land where you're living, what they call Section 12, that's still their cemetery. A cemetery? I'm getting all the neighbors together on Saturday. To do what? To figure out what to do. You remember how you said we were the first ones here? So this place couldn't possibly be haunted? Come on now, don't start that again. Well, we're not the first ones here, Shag. We're not even the only ones here. Gene. There are things going on in this house that we can't explain, but just because some old lady says that we're living on a cemetery doesn't mean that the house is haunted. Then how do you explain all the crazy things going on? All right, the house is haunted. Let's assume for a minute that the spirits of the dead are rising up through the floorboards as we speak, but don't, for God's sake, don't say anything about that to the neighbors, because if you do, we're going to be laughed right off the block. I have much bigger concerns than getting laughed off the block, Shag. Iva Ruth says that they were burying people here right up until 1939. There are hundreds of bodies down there. And unless we get some help from the neighbors up here, it's just you and me. Let me have some of that dead gas. Thank you. They find a couple of bodies and suddenly it's a mass graveyard. And if there are bodies down there, so what? When you're dead, you're dead. Because bet they wouldn't say that if it was a white cemetery. Does that old lady have any records to prove all this? Grandpa, so many records it'd take ten years to get through all of them. I've been telling Doris ever since we moved in that the house is home. He thinks every creek in the floor is a ghost. Oh, what about the other night? Nothing happened the other night. You were dreaming. saying we've got ghosts, but we've had some weird things happen. Like what? Well, sometimes a TV comes on by itself. We once saw Zeke's robot race across the floor with no batteries in it. Now, that's pretty weird. Our TV switches channel. And sometimes our toilets flush. Your toilets flush? Once I came home and the bath water was turned on. Jake! Come on over here a minute and listen to this. We've had screens pop off the house. Dishes fly out of the cupboard, cracked in the ceiling. We talked about it, and we decided that uh, it's uh, vibrations from oil field explosions in the ground. We said it might be. Well, it certainly has nothing to do with living on a cemetery. Then how do you explain the ghosts? There weren't any ghosts. 
You saw them. I didn't see them. They were right there at the foot of our bed. Three ghosts. I woke you up. You saw them, damn it. I know you did. Why don't you go get your ball and we'll play a little catch. I'll be there in a minute. Come on. You promise not to do this. Didn't you hear what Leo said? We're not the only ones with strange things happening. We've had strange things happen too, Doris. I'm sorry. I'm concerned about the impact of all this on property values. But if you want to turn this into some sort of poltergeist phenomenon, you can just count me out. Count me in. I love a good joke. Maybe it's a joke to you. You live on the other end of the block, but the cemetery is here. The only thing haunting Section 12 is a bunch of overactive imagination. Is that right? Why don't we ask the people whose imaginations tell them that they've got two dead bodies buried in their backyard? <laughs> You okay, Sam? Fine. How come you didn't come out to the barbecue? Oh, uh, we were just, uh... No, we weren't feeling it. The whole community was out there. Yeah, you wouldn't believe what they were talking about. Toys working with no batteries. <clears throat> TV's coming on. The other night, my car started up. All by itself. We got this big black patch growing on our kitchen linoleum. We've had tiles fly off the roof. No, I just can't talk about it. What do you mean you can't talk about it? We're all in this together. Look, if you're embarrassed, join the club. I was afraid I'd get put in a padded cell if I started talking about this stuff. Look, before we knew anything about the cemetery, I went and got a lawyer and filed a lawsuit against the developer for building this house on a grave. You want to know what that developer did? He turned around and sued us for harassment. Harassment? That's tantamount to a gag order. We talk about this with anybody. And they'll sue us for everything we've got. But whatever you do, I can't be part of it. You don't always got any proof. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I gotta go. Now what do we do? I'm gonna pack my things and get out. I'm not living on any cemetery. We can't afford to move out. Where are we gonna live? Where's my parents? Your parents? I'd rather take my parents to the dead. Oh, you know, I don't care what Doris says. I saw those ghosts in my bedroom. They're probably buried under my house. Well, my plan to unite the neighborhood just went up in smoke. From now on, we'll have to do this on our own. How? With our own lawyer. My advice is that you wait and see what happens with a Haney lawsuit. If they're successful, you might just be able to ride in on their coattails. What happens if they're not? Well, then we know where they went wrong and we don't repeat their mistakes. Well, while we're waiting to find out, let's put the house on the market. I don't care at this point if we lose some money. I just want to get out. I understand, but I must advise you, you are legally obligated to tell prospective buyers that the house might be situated over a graveyard. Nobody told us that. Developers claim they didn't know. Nobody's going to buy a house built on a graveyard. And we can't afford to buy a second house while we're still paying for this one. Let's do this. We draft a letter to the title company taking the position that the undisclosed cemetery is a material breach of warranty under your chain of title. Meaning? If they accept that position, they could either relocate the bodies and have the cemetery declared legally abandoned, which is a very costly venture, or they could pay back your entire investment, plus interest on the money and moving costs. Either way, they'll have to pay your attorney's fees, plus compensation for time and mental anguish. You know what I've been thinking about? Yes, and I don't believe in them. My ghosts. Thinking about the trees and bushes. What about them? Those are the people. What? Those plants feed off the dead. Their roots eat through the wooden coffins and into the dead bodies. For God's sake, Jean. 
wonder if they can see us somehow. Yeah, they're looking at us right now, out through the knot holes. Well, maybe they got fiber optic eyes on the ends of their branches. I wonder how many corpses that old pepper tree has soaked up through its roots. <laughs> Trees nourished on the dead. Come back. Ginger can't sleep. What's the matter, honey? She's scared. Yeah. Come on up in here with us. Grandpa. There, Ginger. There. And here. Nothing to be scared of. What about the dead people? Well, not just because the folks buried here it doesn't mean there's anything to be scared of. It just means that the people who built these houses made a mistake. And they have to fix it. It's just the wind. It's just the wind. All right. It says here the Haney's are suing the developers for two million dollars. Listen to this. When their presence is exposed, they may become excited and frenzied. The manifestations which can come forth seem to be endless. Sometimes, they will enter a person's body and take over that you person's You stop body. reading that trash. You used to laugh at that stuff. I just want to know what to look for. There's a whole section on signs and symbols. A snake is a symbol of evil. A bird pecking on a window is a sign of death. That's a sign of a very confused bird. Come on, Gene, you know as well as I do that if you look hard enough, there is a rational explanation for everything that's happening. Not always. Maybe not now. You remember what happened when my grandpa died? The one who got hit by a train? His dog knew the instant he died. That dog started howling the most pitiful howl at the exact same moment, and he was 500 miles away. Now, how do you explain that? That really happened like that. I was right there. I remember they sent back one of his shoes. Still had a toe in it. Must have been about this size. Mmm. Tasty. Feeling like an idiot. Well, my mother sent me this article on uh, water witches. It tells about a guy who um, found some grave sites using a divining rod. Dowsing for the dead. Sounds like a game show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, it tells you how to hold the rod and what to. Is this one of the haunted houses at? Yeah, it is. No. No, it's about two miles up that way. Great, thanks. We're becoming a tourist attraction. Sam had to kick some people out of his backyard this morning. Hey, me, Mom. Hi, Mr. Marshall. Hi, sweetheart. How's the game? It was fun. Everybody wanted to hear my ghost stories. Can we try that thing over at my yard? Sure. Maybe we don't know enough about how to do it. Or maybe we know too much. Meaning what? 
The article said your mind can't have any control over it whatsoever. Carly? Carly, come on down here for a minute, would ya? Come here, honey, we're gonna try something. Put this in your hand, I'll take ginger. There you go, hold on to that now. Hold it real loose. Walk around the yard. What for? You'll see. I'm where? Anywhere. What's it supposed to do? Nothing, just walk. Walk, walk some more that way. on doing this shed. We don't even know what's up there. I am not paying for an exterminator till I find out. Maybe it's just a rat. Why do you have to be so macho about this? It's stuck? No. I expect there's a 500-pound ghost sitting on it. Give me that flashlight. they're dealing with our lawsuit. They can't find the next of kin, so they're digging up the bodies and they're moving them someplace else. Meaning? You remove the bodies, you remove the problem. Yeah, what about all the other bodies? They claim there aren't any other bodies. It's a cemetery! Which is why they're putting up such a fight. Can you imagine how much it's going to cost them to dig up a hundred more bodies and reinter them someplace else? Hell, it'd be cheaper to buy back all our houses. Easy guy. Now, we still have the same problem. Unless you can prove their graves on your property, the title company won't honor your claim. Well, what are we supposed to do? Dig one up? I'm afraid you can't do that. It's against state law to disturb a grave without consent of the next of kin. The title company was kind enough to point that out in their letter, right after the part about how much they sympathize with the dilemma. If we can't dig up the bodies and we can't sell the house without telling people it might be on a cemetery... Digging up graves can't be the only way to prove it's a cemetery. 
Suppose we could find a witness who'd actually been there. 1939 wasn't that long ago. Maybe there's a funeral home with records, or maybe the courthouse. If you could put together enough information, we might be able to present a fairly watertight case. I'm Shag Williams, Hi. and uh, this is my wife, Jean. Hi. We're uh, looking for somebody who might know about a place called the Black Hope Edition. Black Hope Edition? Never heard of it. All right. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, I heard about that old graveyard, but I'd never seen it. See, I come out here from Georgia. When I was 26 years old, back in 48. Do you know the man with the cane? The man with the cane? That could be anybody. I went to school back there in Black Oak. Church, too. That was before it all burned down. Do you know about the cemetery? Sure. I dug some of the graves. Do you think you could show us where it is? Oh, I've been blind for 33 years. Is there any way we could find it? Ain't nothing back there but scrub brush and dirt. Were there any records kept of the burials? Nope. We just went to the lumber yard and made a pine box and stuck it in the ground. That's about the size of it. Do you remember any of the names of the people buried there? Oh, now let's see, there was Terrence Broussard, and Becky Thornton, Billy Parrish, and Joe Turner, Rosie Booz, <laughs> Betty and Charlie Thomas. Were there any grave markers or landmarks? No, no headstones, just a one-by-six plank and maybe a cinder block. But there was one thing you might find, an uh, old pepper tree. It had some kind of carving on it. An arrow. Could be. What does the carving mean? Oh, just a grave marker like any other. There are two sisters buried there. Ellie McWilliams and Josephine Miller. So the tree is definitely in the cemetery. Oh, you... Find that pepper tree you smack dab in the middle of the cemetery. <laughs> I don't think you're going to find any takers, W.D. I don't have any choice. I was out of town for a week. When I came back, Darth was gone. Left in the middle of the night. Something spooked her. I don't know what. She won't talk about it. Won't even admit it. She just took what she needed and left. I miss you, folks. It's been... <laughs> I almost said it's been real. Mortars don't have any records of the burials, and the courthouse files for that period were all lost in the fire. Can you believe that? Well, you have a witness, though. A blind one. Back with her, that's all. What? She's pregnant. 
Oh, Ginger, you're gonna have babies just like Aunt Tina. here, and I'm not saying there is, but if there is, it's not going to hurt us. It's trying to confuse us and scare us. That's all it's going to do. I don't think we're going to have any luck with this. Unless we drop the price down into the basement. It can't hurt to try. At least we're doing something. Maybe we'll find a medium who'll think it's a privilege to live here. <laughs> I'll get it. Morning, George. Morning, Mr. Haney. How's it going? It was strong. He says the title company sending someone out to see us. You mean they're finally going to take us seriously? Yeah, it looks that way. Problem is, they can't get him here for six weeks. Can you hang on that long? I could stand on my head for six weeks if I had to. Hello? Hi, Uncle Daryl. Aunt Tina's having her baby. Oh, my God. Daryl? Is the water broken? Is the heartbeat okay? Okay, okay. We're on our way. Grab your jacket. I can't find my jacket. Get your sweater. Oh, God, I hope she's going to be all right. She's been through so much. didn't make it. Oh, I'm sorry. But look, you have a wonderful new little cousin. Everything went okay? The baby's fine. Don't panic, okay? What is it? The doctor just found something in my blood, that's all. It has something to do with her immune system and how it works with her heart. It's really nothing. Just the doctor said that I have to take it easy and come in for regular checkups. It's just like dad's blood pressure, that's all. 
Feeling you sweet. Sweet. <gasps> they say good things come in threes. We have a healthy grandson. Somebody's coming out from the title company. Now, if we could just get rid of whatever it is. It'd be worse if they used the toilets and didn't flush. I just wish they'd make up their minds. <laughs> Gee. Shag. Yeah. You must be Chris Runyon, American Provincial Title Insurance. We're well, we glad to see you. Come on in. We think these depressions in the ground are the actual grave sites here and here, and there are more along the fence. Before coming over here, I stopped to chat with some of the people over in Baird Station. Did you find Buck Wheeler? The blind man, yes. Did he tell you he actually dug some of these graves? Yes, he sure did. You read our letter? About the snake, the insects, the hole in the ceiling. I've seen everything you've sent us. You know, you've become quite a conversation piece back at the home office. Which reminds me, I got a plane that leaves at 4.30. I ought to be getting back to the airport. Did you get everything you need? More than enough, thank you. What do you think will happen next? All I can tell you is my company has a sterling reputation. If we have the obligation to clear the title for this property, we'll do it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. I hope they just give us our investment back and pay the lawyer's fees. I'd be happy with that. It cost them a heck of a lot more to dig up all the bodies. It appears he came out to discredit you. His report says there's no definitive proof that the cemetery exists. He says the markings on the tree could have been made by kids playing cowboys and Indians. He also claims that you told him you heard rumors about the cemetery before buying the property. What? We didn't know about it. I mean, even if we did, why would we tell him? He wouldn't. Then why would he say we did? The more sticky they can make it, the longer they can keep it tied up in court. They're going to lose in the end. There ain't going to be an end. What does that mean? It means you're dealing with a company with unlimited resources. If that's the game they want to play, they can afford to play it a lot longer than you can. So the uh, bad guy wins, you know, the bully gets the biggest piece of cake. No. If that's the way they want it, I can play that game too. He's right. We don't have the money to play that game. I mean, the winning is everything and the hell with morality game. I'm going home to dig up some bones. This is crazy. Not crazy. It is the safest thing I've done since we moved in here. Honey, this isn't a time. Tina's on her way over here with the baby. Well, until she gets here, I'm going to dig. I don't care if I only get a few inches a day. I'm going to get what I'm after. You realize what this means? 
We're not only going to be guilty in the eyes of the law, we're going to be guilty in the eyes of whatever it is that wants us out. I mean, it's one thing to build a house on the graves. It's another thing to start digging up their bodies. Nothing is going to stop me, Shag. Not all the powers of heaven and hell are going to stop me. Set the table, Carly. Hmm? I'm gonna have lunch. inside. We're fixing lunch. Jean, I said we're fixing lunch. what she's gonna dig up back there. Who's gonna scare away the birds? outside we came in here and she fell over yes it's an emergency uh, my wife just collapsed uh, no she can't breathe no she has a bad heart
call you from the hospital. Anything, you just take care of Tina. Everything here will be just fine. Carly, she's gonna be okay. She won't. I know she won't. How do you know? I just know it. She's pulled through lots worse than this. Heck, she'll probably spend the night in the hospital and... What is it, Brandon? What is it, baby? What is it? Dear God, you should have taken me. Why did you take my baby? If I did something wrong, I want you to forgive me. I didn't do anything wrong. You wanted to leave. You were right. We shouldn't have stayed. I broke the ground. I didn't know how far they'd go. Jim Gonchet. There truly are spirits living here in this house. That means there's a life beyond this life. And if there is, Tina is out there somewhere. Maybe even in this very room. Someday, we're all going to be with her. I just want you to know how sorry we are. But Tina, about you leaving. They're taking everything from us they're gonna take. You all come up to Montana and see us sometime. Yeah, after we ever get out from under all this. Intention to wait too long. Neither did we. 